Okay, so this is the story of I got attacked by a group of men. This was a long time ago. This was about 25, no, 25, 26 years ago. It happened in Columbia, Maryland at this nightclub called Silver Shadows. I um I had just had given I had just given birth to my son. He was 3 months old and I hadn't been out or anything like that and wasn't worried about going out. But one of my girlfriends from school uh we had gone to high school together, uh, called me and wanted to go out. She just wanted to use me for a ride. I used to be very gullible and naive and I was, uh, what do you call it? I was a lame, um, you know, just call a thing a thing. So anyway, I didn't know that she just wanted to use me for a ride, of course. She was one of the prettiest girls at school and we had always been cool and I thought she genuinely wanted to spend time with me. So we go out, we get there and I quickly discover that she was not interested in coming out with me. She just wanted to get to the club because her boyfriend was there and he didn't take her. So she wanted to go there and whatever, just game plan. So once I see that she's not there to hang out with me, that hurts my feelings. So I sit down and start drinking. And I wasn't having a good time, I was, thinking, you know, I wanted to be with my son and this was bullshit. So, but you know, I'm there with her and I wasn't gonna just leave her um, stranded. So I sit there and then after a while I realize, you know, the club is closing, it's time to go. So I get up and I start walking to into the parking lot and I'm crossing the parking lot to get to my car. Well, I had been sitting drinking the whole time. So I was smashed, right? And obviously you could tell by my walk, I wasn't paying attention to my walk, but obviously the people around me could tell. And so I'm, you know, going to my car, making my way to my car, get, you know, my keys and shit. <laughs> and I hear this guy say, hey, hey, let me see them titties. They big as shit. I'm drunk as a skunk. So I was like, Fuck you. If you had some manners, somebody probably would give you their titties. <laughs> you could probably get all the titties you want. And the next thing you know, this guy is in my face. And he punched me. He punched me in my face. And then very quickly, another man comes behind me and grabs my arms behind me. And he's holding my arms while this pathetic piece of shit just keeps on punching me in my face. And I think he was trying to knock me out. A lot of people, I'm gonna lift my wig up. So I don't know if you can see it, but that right there, that 
is scar tissue from that attack. Like when I wear my regular hair, you know, people will see it and they'll be like, what, you know, what's, what is that on your forehead? Um, so he keeps on punching me and he keeps on punching me in my face. And as he's punching me, I'm just cussing him out. Like, you a bitch. You hit like a bitch. You fucking faggot. Uh, he don't know the household I came out of. <laughs> he ain't know my mother. <laughs> it's gonna take a lot more than that to drop me. So, um, he's punching me and punching me and punching me. And then I noticed that all these guys have gathered around us and SUVs. There was like five or six big SUVs parked around us. So then, out of nowhere, the girl that I came there with, remember her? She weaves her way into the crowd, grabs me by the arm, and she's like, come on, girl, you just embarrassing yourself. Come on, come on, come on. And she walks me halfway to my car, and then she saunters off again back to her little manipulation games with her boyfriend or whatever. So I get in my car and I locked the doors and I sat there and I cried. <sighs> yeah. So that's that story. Thank God that was it. Nothing else terrible happened that could have happened. I don't know. I I always wondered, like, did they put all those, park all those SUVs around to, like, were they planning on putting me in one of those and kidnapping me and taking me somewhere and then doing whatever. I will never know. Thank God. Um, yeah. So that's that story. Um, here's the time that I plug my book. So if you've seen the plug for the book a million times, you know. <laughs> um, I used to be gay. God delivered me from homosexuality. I, I was gay for some years, for a long time, and God confronted me about it, and he delivered me from it. Uh, I wasn't in church. I, God was not on my radar. I was young. I was stripping i was gay i did whatever you know i was in college i was just doing me and um yeah he he spoke to me he spoke to me and he asked me a question and when i answered that the question answer that question all the sensual feelings that i had about women it was just gone it was just it was just gone just all of it all of it and you know, after that, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not repulsed by gay people. I don't hate gay people. I love gay people. They're my brothers and my sisters, you know, in Christ, whether you like it or not. Um, 
I don't have any problem with gay people. Just like I don't have a problem with people that gamble. I don't have a problem with people that talk, you know, real harshly and meanly to people and are rude. You know, it's all kinds of sin that we all do. And one is no greater and no worse in, um, in God's eyes than the other. It's just, is it going to hurt you is the thing. Is it going to help you live your best life is the thing. But anyway, so God delivered me from homosexuality and I wanted to give something back. I, I wanted to do something to try to make heterosexual relationships better. I met so many women that were had chosen to become gay because they were just tired of being in relationships with men where they felt like none of their needs was met none of them none of them none their emotional needs were not met um their physical needs definitely were not met um a lot of times financially there was no accountability and they couldn't depend on, you know, guys to do what they said they was going to do or was supposed to do or whatever. And unfairness with the children being left uh, carrying most of the load with the kids and all that kind of stuff. And they were just tired of these lopsided relationships. And, um, and then when they weren't even getting pleased in the bedroom, it was just like they didn't have nothing to hold on to. He ain't, he ain't acting right. He don't give me nothing for my heart. He don't give me nothing that, you know, that is satisfying. And then we go into the bedroom. He's getting his, but I'm not getting mine. Bump him. Why? Why should I deal with him? I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm not getting anything out of it. So, um, they, yeah, would choose to be gay. And um, so... I know when I was in that lifestyle, I always, one of the first things I did was learn how to please a woman in the bedroom because I just thought it was stupid to be in that lifestyle and I'm a woman and I don't know how to please a woman, but I ran into a lot of women like that and I wasn't going to be one of them. So the first thing I did was learn the one, two, threes and ABCs of how to give women multiple orgasms. And so I put those step-by-step -step instructions in the audio book, Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. You can find the link down in the description and um, it's on my Koji page. Uh, yeah, so I'm working on making my videos shorter. <laughs> I'm trying to anyway. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. You are way more special than you think you are. You know more than you think you do. There is greatness inside of you. And I believe in you. You have a great day, okay? Bye.